So should you get 8 gigs of RAM or 16 gigs of RAM on the brand new MacBook Air? And why Apple probably will never change the RAM on the base model? Let's talk about it. All right, welcome back to my channel. And this video has been done a couple times, but I actually want to show you instead of just tell you what to get here. I'm going to show you some examples, so stay tuned for those. So here you are, you're deciding on this brand new shiny 15 inch MacBook Air, and you're deciding should I get 8 gigs of RAM or 16 gigs of RAM. I'm just going to show you in a second exactly where it starts to kind of fall apart, all right? If you get the 8 gigs versus the 16 gigs, and then I'm going to show you exactly why Apple has literally no incentive ever to change this. We could have 8 gigs for the next couple years on the base models, even though it should really be 16. So without further ado, we'll talk about all this. I know I did a video recently where I said, don't upgrade the base model, just get the base model 15 inch MacBook Air, otherwise go with the 14 inch in the United States that cost is very similar once you start upgrading the, the air but overall I understand the form factor everyone came back and said well it's a better weight it's a better size that's fine but hear me out on this this is some things you're gonna be up against here with RAM and uh, what you should get 8 versus 16 so sit back relax I'm gonna show you some examples so it makes a little bit more sense let's get into it all right now for this example I know we're talking about a 15 inch MacBook Air with the M2 chip but I'm gonna show you some examples on this system right here. There's a reason for me doing this. This is an M1 20, 24 inch iMac, obviously. And I'm gonna share my screen here in a second. The, the beauty of this is this SSD is actually faster. This is the base model. It's only got 256 gigs of RAM. It's actually fat, or 256 gigs of storage. It's actually faster than the storage that's on the base model of the 15 inch MacBook Air, all right? So take a look at my screen. So if you're just a user, if you do this, what I'm gonna show you, you probably wanna go with 16 gigs of RAM, all right? So here it is. So I usually, what I usually do for my workflow, my videos and stuff, I open up a bunch of tabs. You can see up here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Maybe that's not you know, the, the normal case, all right? But I have 15 tabs open right now. I go through Mac rumor stories. I go to Apple's website. I do all this different stuff as I'm preparing for a story and I'm talking to you right now. I have this up here, right? So you can see all these different websites up here. Now, if I go ahead and I minimize this, look down here. So look at, I just minimized it. So some of my memory is coming back. You can see it here. But overall, this was really stressed. See this yellow over here? Let me actually bring this program up over here. And as soon as I do that, and watch, it's gonna go back into the yellow, see that? Which means it's becoming more stressed on memory. So you can see it right there. And I'll get into that in a second. All right, so look down here. This is the most important part of this whole thing. You can still see it's in the yellow though. So I have eight gigs of physical memory here, memory use 7.29, then there's caching, swap use. So you can see swap is 3.12 gigabytes being used right now. And that swap is being used off of your SSD drive. This SSD drive is faster than the drive that you have on the 15 inch M2 MacBook Air, just because of the way they have the one chip versus the two chips. Why you, everyone's beaten that to death, right? So this is actually faster storage and we're using 3.12 zero nine gigabytes of swap right now, which is coming off that storage of the SSD. So what do I have open to cause this? Well, I have an editor open, and this editor happens to be CapCut, which is a third party one. So if you use a lot of third party tools, they tend to use a lot more memory. If I look over here, you can see CapCut's number one with 2.64 gigabytes of usage. So when you use that kind of memory, when you did different programs, let's just say they're not all coming from the Apple store, a lot of times they're not gonna be optimized as much. This one tends to use a lot, all right? The other things that are gonna be used a lot of is all these different websites. You can see them up here, see this? I have all those websites open, but Mac Rumors in particular happens to be more of a memory hog than other websites. You just don't know. So some websites are gonna use more memory, you can see. I mean, some of these are using one point, you know, one gigabyte of, of basically memory up here, and it's just a website, right? And I have 20, what is it, 15 tabs open like I showed you. And then if I go back down here, you can see that I have Safari's open, which is obviously to go to the websites. And then I have a few other things open. So I have Keynote open right here. You can see it, I just was, it's just a sample right now. I'm gonna shut that, but basically, I didn't shut it, but I just closed, you know, minimized it. I have Keynote open, and then I have Pages open. I have QuickTime, because I'm doing this video. And then I have the App Store open. And so you can see that I have a few things open down here. But this is my normal use, right? And when I'm pushing this, you can see here it's 3.12 gigs of swap, right? So I'm using a lot of swap memory. And if I had 16 gigs of RAM in this case, it would definitely make a big difference. Now when I start doing things over here to this thing, so let's just say I'm gonna download this. Now watch over here, watch the left-hand side over here, but as soon as I start doing things on my timeline over here and stuff, you're gonna notice that this over here, your memory pressure is gonna go up. See, it went up and then it came back down. If I do enough of this, if I start rendering videos, 
This is actually gonna go into the red. So now it's coming back down because I'm not really doing anything on the computer right now. See it right there? But you can see that overall, if I have CapCut open, I have Activity Monitor open, I have Safari open with all those tabs, I have Keynote open, and I have a couple other programs open, I'm gonna be hitting the swap limit, and it's gonna start causing some slowdowns. The other day I tried to do a video just like this, where I had 15 tabs open and I had a bunch of stuff going on, I was recording it, and I could barely scroll through the websites because the memory was just couldn't catch up. It was taking a long time and it was hard to film my video because the fact is I couldn't really scroll through everything quick enough while I was talking about it. It really messed me up. So look down here now. Now the memory pressure is doing well. But obviously, once you start getting in here and you start downloading stuff and you start doing all this other stuff, right? You, you know, as soon as I start clicking on this, look over here now. See the memory pressure? It goes straight up. So you can't really do much on here when you have all these applications open. That's the problem. Now, if you're a user that doesn't use CapCut, all right, let's just go ahead and go CapCut. We're going to quit that. You don't do video editing, right? But maybe you do GarageBand. GarageBand could be a memory hog too. But overall, what I'm saying is if you don't have all this stuff open and you're basically, you know, pages open, but let's just say you just have pages open, you don't have 15 tabs open all the time, and, you know, you don't have to use, you know, I have Finder open, you don't use Keynote ever really, um, so I'm going to go ahead and shut Keynote down, watch that. So now I have all those tabs open, let's just go ahead and delete that. So I have all these tabs open now, right? Now look at, even with those tabs open, the memory still kind of went up because I'm doing some stuff. It's probably going to come back down though. So what I'm getting at is, when you have a lot of stuff open and you have things like this going on, you can see that memory pressure come in and you're in a big, you know, usually in a situation where you got to kind of fix that and that's going to be having to shut some applications down, maybe some less websites and doing less stuff on the computer. All right, so just to wrap that up, this whole speech here, I would go with 16 gigs almost in all cases unless you know you're somebody that's just going to be doing basic browsing and stuff. It'll be fine, trust me. But when you start doing all this other stuff, if you know you're that person, if you just know that you're going to be opening up different applications, working on multiple things, you don't tend to close applications, go with the 16 gigs of RAM, all right? All right, so after all this time, why does Apple still give you 8 gigs of RAM if we see the issue here, right? Why do they keep doing this? because they painted themselves into a corner. All right, come over here. Look at my screen, you can see it over here. It says MacBook, your 15 inch. Here it is a 15 inch Acuic Air. You can see right here, eight gigs of memory, right? If you go to 16, it's $200. That's a lot of money for Apple, a lot of profit, all right? Most people are gonna buy this eight gigs right here and they're gonna run into some issues, but they'll be fine with it. But all the people that do stuff like me, video editing, or if you do like music development, any of that stuff, hey, like to have a ton of tabs open, you're gonna wanna get the 16 gigs of RAM, all right? If you come down here, you see that it's 200 bucks. Well, Apple knows that if they do this, they're gonna kinda of kill the golden goose for themselves, right? That's $200 times millions and millions of units they sell every year, especially the people that are just basically going to the 16 gigs, not to the 24. Very few people go to 24 gigs. A lot of people go to 16, very few to 24. When you talk about the studio and you talk about the more expensive units, people go with the base 16 gigs or the 32 gigs, but they very rarely go to 64, 128. Those are very, very rare users, all right? They don't make a lot of money off that. They make the most money off of going from the base just one iteration up and they're charging 200 bucks for that iteration because a lot of people do it they've they painted themselves into a corner where if they give that to you nobody will ever go higher than that that are base models 16 is plenty of RAM right 16 is more than you probably most people need even if you're doing video editing and stuff it's more than I need I never run into problems with that on my other systems in this case though Apple ran and kind of painted themselves in the corner because they know that people will upgrade once, but they're not going to upgrade twice. So if they give that to you for free, they're not going to get that golden goose 200 bucks for people upgrading from there. And therein lies the problem. So we might be stuck with 8 gigs of RAM for a long, long time here. It's kind of a, you know, I don't know how they're going to solve it. Maybe they'll go to 12 gigs and then they'll say 16 gigs is extra to get a little bit more money out of people. But overall, I think that's why they did it. And they just don't know how to get out of it. They've literally painted themselves around and they don't know what to do now because that's such a, you know, profitable thing for them. They just do not want to give it away for free. All right, I want to wrap this up. I hope this helps a little bit. My videos are a little bit off the beaten trail because I don't have a script. I just go off of what I feel and think as I'm talking. So I hope you guys like these videos. Subscribe to the channel if you can, and I will talk to you soon. Peace.